Will the latest numbers make buyers smile? Oscar Fraser Park gets a facelift and holiday displays for kids of all ages, right now on The Real Estate News. The Low Country is a great place to live. Welcome to The Real Estate News. I'm Betsy McDaniel. In the most recent report from the National Association of Realtors, the latest numbers and home prices may give those looking to buy something to smile about. The median price of an existing home fell 0.24% in October. Actually, prices have been falling each month since hitting their high in June. This is a fairly typical seasonal adjustment as prices usually soar in summer months as the market is flooded with buyers hoping to close on homes before the school year begins. However, year-over-year -year median prices are still up 5.5%, and inventory in the market remains low, giving fewer options to buyers. So although the small month-to-month -month price decline gives buyers a little break, it appears to be still somewhat of a seller's market. Ted Turner has pledged to charitably transfer his 4,680-acre St. Phillips Island to the state of South Carolina via a bargain sale. St. Phillips Island is located near Hilton Head between Charleston and Savannah and is accessed by a 15-minute boat ride through creeks, marsh, and ocean. If the acquisition is approved by the Joint Bond Review Committee and the State Fiscal Accountability Authority, the island will become part of Hunting Island State Park, managed by the South Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. The months after the acquisition will be spent assessing its resources and operational capacities to determine its optimal management structure and revenue potential. The SCPRT views this as a unique opportunity to add an exceptional coastal experience to their inventory while ensuring the continued stewardship of its natural resources. The Park Service currently manages and protects more than 80,000 acres of South Carolina's natural and cultural resources, which range from deep mountain wilderness and old-growth old forests to plantation homes, battlefields, waterfronts, and wetlands. Slow traffic ahead? Most likely. With developments such as Latitude by Margaritaville and the East Argent development discussed here on our last show, it seems unavoidable that traffic in Beaufort and Jasper counties will intensify. Beaufort County has taken the issue of traffic on US 278 head-on in several ways, issuing bonds to pay for nearly $10 million in road improvements, partnering with the SC Department of Transportation to change traffic signal patterns to reduce backups, and in 2018, voters will be asked to pass a referendum to increase sales tax to help pay for Hilton Head Bridge improvements. In Jasper County, East Argent's developer, Argent Land Holdings LLC, has committed nearly $80 million in impact fees to road infrastructure projects in and around the community including three new traffic lights and the development of the East Argent Loop between New River Parkway and Argent Boulevard, ending across from Oldfield and Okatee. And voters in Jasper County have proved willing to spend tax dollars on transportation projects in the past, most recently last year when they approved a sales tax referendum to, remaze, to raise money for road improvements. Oscar Fraser Park and its Field of Dreams is getting an upgrade. To mark 30 years of serving the Lowcountry, the Bluffton Rotary Club will enhance the playground and bring other improvements to the park. The facelift is set to begin early next year, and the Rotary Club hopes the addition of a creative train-themed playground and other planned improvements will put the park on par with Bluffton's Dubois Park, creating another destination for family fun in the Old Town area. The Rotary Club is partnering with the town of Bluffton and members of the Hilton Head Island Bluffton Chamber of Commerce Leadership Program on the project. Other planned improvements include a new picnic pavilion with restrooms, a walking trail, an art wall, space for formal events, and a splash pad with fountains. Playground construction is slated to be complete by spring of 2018, at which time the capital campaign for the next two phases of improvements will kick off. The Bluffton Rotary Club has set aside $45,000 for the initial phase and has worked with town officials to identify grants that could help pay for the estimated $1 million project. And the Chamber is also holding fundraisers for the project as well. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas on the island. In fact, it's the most wonderful time of year at Shelter Cove Town Center from now until December 30th. Events include visits from Santa, horse and carriage rides, skating rink, yes, you heard that right, movies in the park, and of course, their spectacular light display, which is open to the public nightly, nightly from 5.30 to 9 p.m. Visit sheltercovetowncenter.com for a detailed schedule of events. Christ Lutheran Church at 829 William Hilton Parkway is hosting the Island Christmas Village, a large three-dimensional display centered on a snow-covered mountain viewed in the round. A winter wonderland filled with trains, trolleys, and villages sure to please the young and the young at heart. Display hours are Fridays from 4 to 7 p.m. until December 22nd, Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. until December 23rd, and Christmas Eve from 3 to 5 p.m. 
Enjoy the lights in Harbor Town. Stroll along the harbor and enjoy the illuminated seasonal figures and the towering Christmas tree in the center of it all. Lights are displayed from 6 p.m. to midnight nightly until January 1st. And after taking the year off last year due to damage from Hurricane Matthew, the lights are back on at Fire Rescue Station 3, located at 534 William Hilton Parkway. Drive through to see the awesome display the firefighters have created. The media sources on your screen will have more on these and other stories, and we would love for you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Brian Kynard talks villas, and Tanner Sutphin has some news to share right after the break.